Today we're going to solve an integral in Google Docs and since we're in Google Docs we might as well write a title. Okay, this is a very strange video mainly because I'm um, doing it in Google Docs but also this integral is quite a lot harder than I expected. So anyway, let's get into the solution that I came up with. And yeah, so firstly we have 2008, 2009. These are numbers that we don't really want to deal with. I'm just going to let n equal 2008. So let's just rewrite the integral. Um, so 2009 would be n plus 1, right? Okay. Now, what's the first step? This sine 2x, that kind of um, reminds me of double angle, right? So might as well write this as 2 sine x cos x. And of course, we're raising this to the um, nth power. Okay. Now, we should probably simplify this. So we can take this 2 outside as 2 to the n. And then we have sine to the n, um, yeah, sine to the n, and then cos to the n. So after this, maybe you're a bit stuck. What do we do? Well, I'm just going to tell you, we can do this sort of factoring trick. We're going to factor out cos to the n plus 1 outside of this denominator. And that's a pretty good way to get a tangent appearing. So you'll see what I mean if we factor this out. We can rewrite this as cos to the n plus 1 times tan to the n plus 1 plus 1. So just take a moment, you can see that these actually do match. Yeah, so they do match, as you can see. And now we're going to take this cos to the n plus 1 uh, outside. So remember, we're squaring it. So when we take it outside, it's going to be cos to the uh, 2n plus 2. Okay, nice. Well, now we can do some cancellation at the top, since we have, uh, what do we have? We have cos to the n, and when we take that down, that will just be cos to the n plus 2 on the bottom. Then cos to the n plus 2 is cos to the n times cos squared. So we have a cos squared in the denominator, but that's the same as having a sec squared on the numerator. So that's pretty good. And then this sine to the n over cos to the n, well, we can just uh, write, oh, oops, I deleted the whole thing. Okay, it's fine. So we can write this sine to the n over cos to the n as just tan to the n. And now we have everything in terms of tan almost, but this cot, well, we should probably deal with that. So cot x is 1 on tan x, and now 1 on tan x, well, we're taking ln of that, so we're just going to have a negative sign. And now this is great because we have everything in terms of tan and multiplying that by sec squared. So we just do a u substitution, or well, maybe a t substitution, the t equal tan x. And this implies that dt is sec squared x dx, so that's kind of the reason why we're doing the substitution. Okay, so the bounds become, well, tan 0 is the bottom bound, and tan pi on 4 is the top bound. And now we're just changing this, so tan would become t, and we're just doing that all around. And then sec squared x dx was just dt, as you can see. Nice, so now we've removed all the trig functions, but uh, this is a bit cooked. So we have l and t, and it kind of looks like an integration by parts, but... Nah, it kind of doesn't work, sadly. Let me, let me write that down. Yeah, it doesn't really work in this scenario, integration by parts. You can try it and see that um, it doesn't converge when you sub in the bounds. You know when you get integration by parts, you have some part that's not an integral? Yeah, that part doesn't converge. So we're going to do something else. Notice that we have 1 on 1 plus something squared. So that something here is t to the n plus 1. t to the n plus 1 is between 0 and 1 in this bound. The goal is to write this whole chunk as a series, and we do that using a geometric series. So 1 on 1 minus u, that's clearly a geometric series, the infinite sum of u to the k. But we can replace u with minus u to get a similar series, and that's closer to what we can implement here. Okay, then we're going to differentiate both sides, and that way we actually get a squared thing in the denominator. We're going to get 1 on... Uh, sorry, minus 1 on 1 plus u squared. And on the other side, well, you're differentiating u to the k, okay? We're differentiating with respect to u. And that would just be like this, the power rule, okay? Now, we're going to let u equal t to the n plus 1. And that way, we have a series that looks... Uh, okay, it's going to look a bit weird, but... Yeah, so we're going to let u equal t to the n plus 1. And uh, how should I do this? Okay. So we're multiplying this power by k minus 1. 
So let me reiterate, the goal is to write that whole chunky thing in the, in the integrand as a series, and that would make it less chunky. Yeah, okay. So we almost have that. Uh, let's just put this t to the n and multiply it here. So that way we can, yeah. And this t to the n is independent of k. So we can move it inside the sum. Now let's just uh, expand this. So n plus 1 times k minus 1 is something like this. And well, that's just minus n minus 1. And we're multiplying that by t to the n. So uh, you just add the exponents. And then yeah. So these would cancel and we're left with this. Okay, so now we have that whole thing as a sum and we can put that inside the integral. So we'll just replace this thing here with the sum that we just worked out. Nice. So now we're gonna interchange the, the operators. So we have an integral of a sum and that's just the sum of the integral. But in this case, it, it converges. I don't actually know when you can do the swap. So you guys let me know in the comments. Anyway, so this minus 1 to the k times k, we'll just take that outside because that's independent of t. And then we have this integral to evaluate. You could do integration by parts here. You could do integration by parts, but it's a bit cooler to do it this way. So you could do a u sub letting u equals ln t. But we're just going to let u equal minus l and t. You'll just see that it works nicer with the bounds. So what would that give? Okay, so minus u is l and t. And so uh, e to the minus u is just uh, t, right? And then dt is minus e to the minus u du. Okay, right. So this is i. What does the bottom bound become? Uh, so what do we have? We have u equal to minus l and t. So minus l and 0 is uh, just minus infinity, minus minus infinity. So yeah, that works. And then the top bound is just zero. Okay, so then t was e to the minus u. Now ln t is just uh, minus u, as that's from the u sub that we made. And then dt is just e, sorry, minus e to the minus u du. Okay, that's good. So now we've got rid of the log and we're just left with exponentials, and that's a bit nicer. So this minus and minus will cancel. And now this e to the minus u, if I'm going to combine it with this other exponential, I just add the exponents, and um, that would just be the same as doing this. Okay, now we've got rid of that. And minus 1 plus 1 is 0. Okay. So we have something a lot more tame. But firstly, we'd like to swap the 0 and infinity, right? So we can negate the integral and put a negative sign outside, we can do the negative sign into the minus 1 to the k. Right, so these bounds will just switch. And then we're almost done, kind of. But we do a nice substitution. You could do integration by parts here, but we'll just do a substitution to make it nicer. So we'll let this thing up here. Uh, hold on. Okay, we'll let this thing in the exponent. Uh, u times n plus 1k. We're going to let that be z. And that way we can do uh, dz. Okay, before that, u is z on n plus 1k. So du, uh, let's do an implied symbol. Yeah, there we go. And that implies that du is 1 on n plus 1k um, dz. Nice. No, no, dz, not dx. Okay. How does this change the bounds? Well, the bounds obviously don't change. You get infinity times n plus 1k. And you also get 0 times n plus 1k. Bounds clearly not changing. Okay, so then you can see that this, uh, that was just z, and then du is 1 on n plus 1k. So we clearly get a uh, 1 on n plus 1 squared k squared term from this. So let's just put that over here outside the integral. Remember, because that's nothing to do with z. And now we just have this small integral to evaluate, but you can do integration by parts or you can just know that this is the gamma function evaluated at 2 or just the factorial of 1. So 1 factorial is 1, so this integral is just 1. That's pretty nice. Now we can do a bit of simplification, cancelling this k over k squared and taking out this 1 on n plus 1 squared. Wait, 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 we made a mistake here, which you might have noticed. The k equals 0. Oh, okay, wait. Okay, so here... Um, we can actually make the index uh, 1 
yeah, k equals 1 to infinity. Because the zeroth term is just 0, so you're adding 0. We don't need to worry about the zeroth term. Okay, I guess we just change all of these. Yeah, that, that's kind of embarrassing, but we can fix it. And yeah, so that's the only little hiccup. The rest of it should be fine. And now we just have this interesting sum to evaluate. I'll write out all the terms. This is actually just uh, 1 on 1. Uh, let's see, 1 on 1 minus 1 on 2 plus 1 on 3 minus 1 on 4, etc. And amazingly, this converges to ln2. Yeah, so this is really cool. This sum is just the alternating harmonic series, which evaluates to ln2. And there you go, we have our answer. 2 to the 2008 over 2009 squared ln2.